Hey, everybody. Welcome back to My Wave Podcast. Hope you're enjoying these episodes as they come out each Tuesday. Super excited today to have Phil DeAngelis with us. We'll get to his my wave story in just a minute, but I do want to give a uh, big thanks to Billy here at Copilot Studios. He's doing an awesome job. You can follow him on Instagram at Copilot Studio. Secondly, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor for this episode, and that is Sully's Archery Tag. Sully's Archery Tag is a mobile event where they bring the fun to you. It's played like dodgeball, but with arrows. Uh, Phil, have you ever played Archery Tag? No. Dude, you have to play Archery Tag. It is amazing. <laughs> it sounds she, like it should be on my repertoire. Yes, yeah, so you can check them out at sullysarcherytag.com, sullysarcherytag.com. Lastly, um, you ever bought anybody a cup of coffee, Phil? Yes. So you ever bought anybody a virtual coffee? Uh, no. No, so you can check out buymeacoffee.com uh, slash my wave and you can support this podcast by buying me a cup of coffee appreciating what you hear whatever it's five dollars a cup you can buy me multiple cups give me jitters but check it out buymeacoffee.com slash my wave right on yeah yeah so phil What's i've up, never met you man i know how did we miss each other I, it's really funny it is we share <laughs> probably share the same piece of concrete uh down at riceville beach uh Parking is expensive there. I, it's re getting ridiculous. Sorry, yeah. I'm not going to rant. No, yeah, you're entitled to, though. <laughs> I, I am. I am entitled, but I, I will resist. But we have some uh, mutual friend yes. that actually connected us today. He was supposed to be on here. His name's TJ. TJ. And, yeah, and he uh, he canceled on me. So I was like, hey, since you canceled on me, you have to find me somebody. <laughs> and so he, he sent our contacts, and we finally connected, and... Nice to meet you, man. Nice to formally meet you, man. Yeah. 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 So we're going to jump in uh, to your wave, your story, your life. Absolutely. Uh, because that's what this podcast is all about. So that's flattering. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never it, thought I was like, I'm just, just a loving surfing guy. And then holy crap, I get to talk about surfing. There you go. Like on a podcast. So what wave? Well, let's back up. When did you start surfing? High school. High school. I... I'm a landlocked, uh, born creature outside Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, so you're born in, outside of Philly. Born outside of Philly. Grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I've been to Lancaster. Amish country, yes, right? Yes, it is. And I never fit in. <laughs> I played all <laughs> the sports and stuff. Uh, I even went to like a boarding school and did the preppy world there and played sports, played college lacrosse. Yeah. And, um, but in high school, I had friends that lived on the Jersey Shore. Okay. And I was they were surfing. and. Yeah. I grew up going to Amelia Island, Fernandina Beach, Florida. Okay. Um, and I just was like, I swimming, I was body surfing, I was doing all these things. And my friends were like, you could do surfing. I was like, why am I not surfing? Yeah. Like, that was the like thought in my brain. Like, How old oh. were you now? I was about 16. Okay. And I committed. I grabbed my buddy Ben, who doesn't really surf to this day, but we're like, we're renting boards and we're surfing and we're figuring this out. <laughs> and we just, you know, Every wave, like all day, eight hours a day, like the, the endless energy that you have as like a 16 year old. Right. And by the end of that, I caught these waves that just like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. And then I kind of just did that shortboard thing. Uh huh. Um, on weekends to the Jersey Shore, I had a friend that lived in Ocean City. Okay. Longport area. And so I was just like, I had this like local St. Augustine local shaper there, uh, Driftwood Surfboards, I think it was okay. called, 6'3, like Thruster. Uh huh. And then I was just like going out to Jersey Shore, just hacking away at waves. And then I got like a canyon, one of those pop outs, those twin fin fishes. Okay. The canyon started bumping out and I was stoked. I'm like, I got this fish. I'm going to go so fast. And then <laughs> I went a little faster. I did. Right. And I just had those all the way through college. Okay. And I went to school in upstate New York at Skidmore College and played lacrosse there. All right. And studied business and geology. Gotcha. Got a job in Boston. Uh -huh. Realized I was close to the ocean. Right. Got stoked. Um, and then I met through mutual friends. Um, he had a beach house in Hampton, New Hampshire. Huh. So the water's always cold. Yeah. The warmest it got was about 68 degrees. Goodness. And people were trunking it then. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Lineup was full of French Canadians. Yeah. So people were speaking French everywhere. You're like, where am I? There's like... No kidding. Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> I, I started cutting my teeth in Ocean City, Maryland. Oh, right on. And, and then spent a lot of time in the Outer Banks as a, as a teenager. 
Gotcha. Uh, we'd spend two weeks on, on vacation every year out there. But uh, most of my surfing growing up was Delaware beaches and Ocean City, Maryland. So, oh man! Yeah. So yeah, my boss he's actually from um, Lewis, Delaware. Okay. And he and he and his uh, brother, who both I work with, uh, both my managers, they they know that beach up and down. Yeah, and and experience cold water. Yes. What's the coldest you ever surfed up there? Thirty-eight. 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 I had. It was still. It was a five-four-three. So like three in my little armpits and. You, I mean, you had to paddle out. Yeah. The, the, the waves were awesome, and you're like, "There's no way I'm not going to paddle out." And you just walk <laughs> through the foot of snow, yeah, onto the sand, walk through the sand. It's just like two extra layers of stuff you got to walk through. Like sometimes, you know, people will shove their board in the sand. We just do it with the ice and the snow, just <laughs> shove it in there. No, thank you. You have like that ultra cold wax yeah. that's like soft if you touch it. You know, wow, that's crazy. So part of this part of this podcast is to educate. Gotcha. Um, and so you said five, four, three. Gotcha. Yeah. So some people are going, uh, I may not be good at math, but what in the heck is a five? No. Four, three? Yeah. I, I skipped over that. So the, the thickness of the wetsuit itself. Yeah. Um, and that's not to include all the different um, ways you can patch together a wetsuit with like not just woven seams and glued seams with patches on those seams as well to hold in um, temperature, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but five in the core. Um, four in the extremities, and then around the joints, they actually made a little thinner so you could paddle a little better. Right. Uh, three for the flexibility exactly. and, and whatnot. Wow, five, four, three. I I have a four and a half, three and a half. That is amazing. That should be toasty. Yeah, that's super amazing for around here. I mean, what do we get? Maybe a dip into the forties on a cold, cold winter. Maybe. And Maybe. I've really gotten weak since I've lived here. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, my blood is thinned out for sure, and I don't miss it at all. Yeah, you. Get, I bet you get ragged on when you're. I get ragged on. If I ever went up there, oh my gosh! Like if my friends are going to hear this. They live out in like um, in California. They, they they are in the same boat. They're always in their three twos. Right. But there were times when we were like, we had the heat blasting. You hold in your pee because you're going to want to use it. Right. And you're like, all right, let's do this. There's a, there's a lull coming up. Yeah. Um. Fortunately, New Hampshire has a lot of uh, reef quote reef breaks uh -huh, uh -huh. so there's channels and things uh, okay beach breaks were tough though yeah with the duck dives oh i bet i bet i remember as a kid or high school student i had a I had a spring suit underneath my full suit with booties and gloves and i had this the only top <laughs> the only hood i had was like a two mil hood and i remember duck diving some of those you know low 40 days yeah in ocean city and just coming Gosh. up and just, okay and just it just was pulsing you want to throw up your head is pulsing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You want to, in like the third one, you just want to give up. And then you just know you're almost there. I can't imagine with the spring suit because you're probably like paddling with like straight arms. Yeah. And then the, the, the rash that you're getting underneath, it's just miserable. Oh. So wetsuit technology has come a long Ten way. Four. I just got this O'Neill Hyper Freak that's okay. like, you could, I paddled out, I guess the, that huge swell back in March that came through. Mm -hmm. Surf Sea Street there, and I could have had like read a magazine, like floated, right. like it was just the coziest thing ever. Yeah, I've got the O'Neill Mutant Legend. Oh, heck yeah! It is, I'd spent a little coin on it, but I am not. It, isn't it worth it? Oh. It's always worth it. It to is like... worth it. <laughs> so, so where are we? So, grew up surfing colder water. Oh, here it comes. So, I got a longboard. You you were living in Boston now. Yeah, I was living in Boston. Uh -huh. I worked for this company called Zipcar. Um, they do car sharing. And okay. before that, I actually did some environmental work. And I was a weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. um, there was a spot called Nahant, which is this little uh, peninsula. And I could get there before work. Hmm. So I would do the uh, days there was swell. It's a fickle spot. But if I knew it was breaking, because yeah. I had to read all the buoys because it didn't have its own little break. Now it does. Okay. And then I'd be like, oh, it's going off. All right. Get up at five. We'll do this. 20 minutes there, like hour and 15 back into the city because yeah. of the traffic. Oh, goodness. And I would score some fun waves before work and I'd shower at the office. Um, but the the big inflection point was moving to Boston, having a friend in New Hampshire and getting a longboard. Okay. And now I longboard almost, not exclusively when it's firing, I'll shortboard. Right. But uh, yeah, I got a 9.5 Robert August Retro series. That's what you ride now. No, what I ride oh, that now. Was the, that was what you bought there. That's what, that's what, that was like, that would led me into that, the wave, if you will. Okay. Okay. Um, so currently though, you ride. I ride a 9.8 um, Bing Continental. Okay. And it's cheating at nose riding. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. Yeah. 
it has a lot of the classic aspects of that I like in you know, like a, a, a log. Mm-hmm. So 50 50 rails, mm-hmm. um, concave nose that transitions into a belly because mm-hmm. I like to go off the belly and I keep a nice pivot fin in it, okay. which is um, flying diamonds, gotcha. like CJ Nelson fin. Gotcha. So, so pausing right there, like I've always been a short border. Yeah. But I, I bought a lot, I, I got a long board. Oh man, I'm trying to think when. Mark and Lindsay got married. I was doing a wedding. Yeah. And they wanted to get me a gift for officiating their wedding. And oh, sweet. I was like, well, that's cool. You know, gift yeah. card to Dick's or whatever. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> and they were like, no, we want you to get a, a custom surfboard. I was C- like, did they say custom? Yeah. And Gosh, I was like, Gosh, that's awesome. I was like, <laughs> what do, you, do, you, do you even know what you're talking They were like, yep, yeah, we've done our research. Here's your salary cap. Go find you a board. Oh, my gosh. And so anyway, I ended up getting a 92 Savage love it i wish i knew more uh-huh. before i bought it like savage makes some good log that salted mm-hmm. sow is an awesome model yeah yeah so mine's mine's more of your basic cruiser nice but you had talked about 50 50 rails yeah and then a, a pivot fin so so let's break that down a little bit yes describe a long board and what do you mean by 50 50 rail so 50 50 rail on a short board you're not going to have that it's almost like half the rail is coming down from the top and half is coming up from the bottom. So mm-hmm. it's like 50-50. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I commonly say is a pair on long boards, because um, you talk about basic long boards, which is what I call them, and then you talk about involvement or like a more of a pig style mm-hmm. um, where you have a narrow tip and the wide point is back from center. Mm-hmm. Um, my board does not have that. It's parallel all the way down, Okay, has 50-50 rails mm-hmm. that let it just kind of like a neutral placement in the water. Mm-hmm. So when I do turns on it, I can kind of feel it more with the belly underneath. Mm -hmm. And when I say belly, I mean like the bottom has a convex um, feel to it. Okay. Rather than like a hard V or a double V within a concave you would see on short boards. Right. Long boards want that hull aspect. Mm -hmm. So you can stay trimming in that one pocket of the wave. Okay. Which will allow you to walk up to the nose when it starts sucking down in the back there with the tail. Right. Um, and, and allow to pivot with that belly. So using a big pivot fin to redirect the board mm-hmm. with enough surface area in the fin that you can do that with such a large board and to put it back into the pocket again where you can go up for another nose ride. Gotcha. Y'all got that? Was that, so, a, was that too intense? No, okay. no, no. no. <laughs> some, some people that listen to this are, are really learning. Gotcha. And, and so the more education we can give, the, the better it, it will be. Now that that rail that you have set up, does it ever go back and get get hard towards... I do not like a hard edge so you're, for this log. You're all the way back. Right? I'm soft. They call it soft rails right. all the way back. You know, If you ever listen to Joel Tudor or like duct tape things, he'll, he'll call out like no hard edges in the tail mm-hmm. for those nose riding events because he's like, you need that retro because you want the water to suck over the top of the board. Okay. And I'm going to get nerdy because I'm, I'm a <laughs> geologist. I'm a scientist. It's called Archimedes principle, right? Okay. In physics, where you need that weight pushing back on the on the back of the board. I'm 195. I need to have that happening so I can stand on the nose of the board without the board flipping over. Okay. So that's why on my 92, I can't go all the way to the nose without the tail. It could flipping be a variety up. of reasons. Like say. Concave in the front of the nose will play a role. Okay. Um it allow you to plane over flatter sections and get up there and create lift. Mm-hmm. That's what the concave is for, creating lift in the front. And the back is for holding it down. So high perfor- you see Taylor Jensen. He's a tall guy, and you'll see him on a 9-0 <laughs> just hanging 5 and 10. And you're like, mm-hmm. how did he do that? Right. And I have a high pro board for when it's pumping, and I'm right. on a long board. And he, it's just p- positioning of your board. Uh-huh. And if you're in that little, like, People think they can nose right on the flat front of the face of the wave, and you're not going to get it there unless okay. you're 80 pounds. <laughs> so you have to get confident, right? And you have to bring yourself back into that pocket more where you're like, wow, it's going really fast. I like this feeling. That's a good time to try to get up to the nose. Okay. Okay. Very good. I, I'm being educated. I like it. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah no, that's good. Like I say, I've always ridden a sh- short board. We just got back from Puerto Rico. I was riding a 510 Hypto Crypto down there. Oh. Love that. That. Is a five ten good good size for you? Because we're like same size, I think, like so height wise. I'm a, I'm about six foot and one sixty five. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. But the the Hipto had thirty three and a half liters uh, at the five ten, and it was it was great. Nice. Do you score? I, you get swell, dude. 
<laughs> Let's not go there. I don't want to make people jealous. <laughs> it was, we had five days of solid surf. Nice. Yeah. Anywhere from five to six at 11 to seven to nine at 11. Wow. And yeah, the whole, the whole week. Gosh, that's awesome. It was, it was mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. But, but we, we didn't, I didn't say that anybody. I didn't go there. It would, would say what? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. So let's, so we're, we're, we got lost in the log, the log tech, the logness. That was awesome. Yeah. So let's go to this wave. Now you are in, I, I'm up in New Hampshire. I'm in Boston. I'm with my buddy. Shout out Mike Sidebottom. If you're watching this, there you're you the man. Cause you coached me into this uh, <laughs> first reef break. Right. And it was some hurricane swell and New England catches a lot of hurricane mm -hmm, swells. Mm -hmm. Um, if it gets around Cape Cod, it's on. Mm. And, um, I had been kind of we need, it's a nine five Robert August retro has a little edge in the tail, mm -hmm. not a lot, um, not a lot of rocker, so it likes to like there's a lot of surface area for you to go fast. And he's like, hey, you've been surfing, we've been surfing beach breaks. I'm getting comfortable doing turns, bottom turns, all these things. And I learned a lot of fundamentals on this board, so mm -hmm. I like take pride in this board. Yeah, still and have it? No, I sold it once I moved oh. down here. I was I was trying to progress up. I did. I was a poor grad student. Um, and I just, I sold it so I could start moving into different boards. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but it was about, it was two feet overhead. It was about eight foot on this place called Rye Rocks. If okay. anyone surfed there. Okay. And it's got this awesome channel, but it's got one, maybe two takeoff spots. Yeah. It's straight reef, like, <laughs> and it's clear and it's dark water. Yeah. You just know there's a great white shark out there <laughs> hanging out the beach up north. Of, I, I've, I've walked out and like, that's a seal body with no head on it, you know, and I, it's just cold, treacherous water. Yeah. I paddled out at Bolsa Chica in California and oh. there was this big, huge, I don't know, walrus or seal, seal and it had thing, this yeah. neck, just big, huge hole Oh gosh. ripped off. And we were like, Hey, look at that. Let's paddle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So yeah, so we paddle out, and I've always known this place to be like hardcore. Can be locally there because of the takeoff, so so acute, and it was pumping, and it was like someone you know shook a carpet, you know, mm. and you could see it coming in from way out. Mm, mm, mm. And it was the day I decided to charge. It was the day I decided like, no, we're gonna paddle into this, and I, I don't know what clicked about it. I don't know why we decided to wear trunks in sixty eight degree water, <laughs> um, but it was me and him, and he's like, he, you know, you have that friend that's like. You want to do this? Let's do this. And he's great. Long, he's a great surfer uh -huh. and longboarder. And I pulled in and the water was clear and I wasn't used to that because it was on a reef. And uh -huh. I looked down, there's boulders, right? There's boils, boulders, everything. But the wave itself was freaking awesome. Nice. <laughs> nice. And I, I didn't even take a high line. A lot of times as a longboarder, you take the high line mm -hmm. and I didn't. I just went to the bottom, bottom turn and slotted in. And I was just like standing up, hand dragging. Okay, so so let's rewind. Rewind. Let's cool, do it. cool water. Cool, Sixty-eight yeah. degrees. You're shorting it, <laughs> and everybody else doing the same, or they? No, they were wetsuits. They were shortboarders. Okay. There, there's some longboarders. The crowd was kind of small. I recognized some of the local guys. I couldn't tell you the name. They're just sure. like the old hardy guy with the white mustache, you know. <laughs> and you're like, this guy's here all the time. Like he knows this. He knows every rock. I've been name. waiting. You know you. There wasn't much of a current, so you just kind of start. Everyone's taking off in the waves. You kind of like float into mm -hmm. the lineup. I was like, "Ooh!" And I just—it was that day. Everything turns on. Everything clicked that day to where I went from a fun surfer to like, "No, I'm doing this as much as I can." Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it was all because of that ride. Uh huh. Where I like took off, looked down the wave, saw the whole thing wall up. Right. Had the momentum. Use the momentum in the bottom turn. Like I can, like I'm literally like visualizing as I'm yes, telling you this. That's so what I want you to do. I, I want you to paint it for us. What's and it didn't barrel, uh -huh. but it was steep, right? Right. And I was just hand dragging, and it took me straight down. I could see like the wisps of the um, seaweed off the boulders mm. below me, that's just kind of going, clear. and then into like blackness where the channel started. Okay. And I just rode out, and I just was like had never really surfed reefs before, and I paddled back out, and I was like. That was the coolest thing like ever in surfing. Yeah. And he was like, you were charging. I was like, was I? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I got so comfortable. I kept kicking deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. So, so that wave, how long do you think that was that you rode? Mm, 
100 yards max. Okay. So had the solid wall. I didn't and you even just have turns. In. I just locked in. That okay. was like, because now I would tear that wave apart, you right. know? <laughs> right. So, but what made that wave your most memorable was that it, this a was feeling. a first. It was a first feeling that that weightless drop when you're dropping in. Mm-hmm. You're like, this is big. And yeah. this is something big pushing me. Yeah. And all those momentous feelings that kind of draw, draw me to surfing still mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that are outside of that longboarding realm of windy two foot day right and that feeling we get as surfers when we drop in like that rush of just hitting a turn or flying any of those feelings generated by the momentum of a wave that was all encapsulated in that ride yeah yeah because when you when you take that drop and then you you're clear on that landing and you're pulling that bottom turn and then locking it in in place time stands still Time stands still. Exactly. You are ultimately present. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have been, you can't, that's, I think that's a very meditative thing in surfing Mm -hmm. is you have to be present when you're doing it. Right. Can't be thinking about anything else except surfing. No. I mean, because if you're thinking about something else, it could be, it could be bad for you. You're going over the falls. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it, It could, it could be bad. Right. But locked in, in the present, in that moment, time stands still. It's you and, and this energy. Right. And you're harnessing it like it's you are literally capturing a wavelength. It's a it's a wave that's yeah. in a medium. So it's like it's just energy that you are capturing. Exactly right. 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 And it's it's indescribable. Yeah. And so for those of you out there who are listening, who have never experienced that, keep surfing. Yeah, I would. That's that's exactly right yeah because you know and you you have friends i have friends you know on their face when they get that right wave mm-hmm. that makes them feel that way and you're like oh what they're so in yeah and, and <laughs> as we're talking about it those listening are going mm-hmm. i want that i want that i want more of that right you know and, and i mean how often do we get that as surfers not as often as you think or you're setting bars like I'm a competitive person, which is why I've really enjoyed doing ESAs. Okay, um, so you surf competitively now? Yeah. Okay. Um, Craig Newkirk got me into it. Yeah. We were surfing one day. He's like, I, I'm not going to imitate his voice, but right. <laughs> hey, Phil, like you surf really good. Like you should come down to ESAs. Like, and I was like, all right. Like I'm a little intimidated. I came out and then I realized it's one big community mm-hmm. and it's supportive. Yeah. As far as progression goes, yeah, people are going to be cutthroat and surf their waves well. It's not pol- like it, I guess it used to be political. It's not anymore. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And I had the chance. I had the opportunity to like do well with it. And I actually won in 2019 the men's Did longboard you? division. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks. That's sick. And um, that kind of led me into like. Some was of that this- at Easterns? No, Which that was just at, uh, lo- at local at the district level. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, all my region regionals got canceled because of COVID. Right. And then um, Easterns, my company, I have to travel a lot for work mm-hmm. um, to different dredge projects. They were like, you can't do mass events right now. You're traveling too much. So oh. I couldn't do Easterns. Yeah. And I and I looked at it and it was the pool. Huge. It was huge. And yeah. Craig even told me, he's like, every Easterns is freaking overhead. Yes. And I was Nags Head and I've surfed there once and that's power out there. Nags Head has, has a different feel. I mean, all the Outer Banks. It feels like West Coast. Like it's yeah. just like a long period. Mm-hmm. Oomph. Like even the small ones are like, you feel that power. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> but that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Craig. So whenever I paddle out. So or shout out paddle, to you, Craig. There you go, Craig. ESAs. We're talking about you and go Hurricanes. Sorry. <laughs> Are you a Flyers fan? No, I wasn't huge into hockey. And then my best friend from high school, we were roommates in Boston. He was a total Bruins fan. So it just turned me off from hockey altogether. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. So yeah, Craig and I, we do share surfing and, and hurricanes, hurricanes hockey. Maybe yeah. I'll appreciate the Hurricanes then. Yeah, they're doing I need great. To pick a North Carolina team now they live here. There you go. I'm, I'm not surprisingly as alone as I thought being an Eagles fan okay. down here in North Carolina. There's a few other transplants that support them. So <laughs> I just kind of hold strong. They're like my little problem child like i love you but why do you do these things <laughs> <laughs> yeah but craig great every time i paddle out he'll see me or i'll see him i said what's up craig and he'll go hey pastor yeah that's what he calls out and everybody's <laughs> like what what's going on out here <laughs> that sounds exactly right <laughs> yeah love the guy he's great he's great but yeah he, he's like you should do it uh, it's like uh, i support that craig I'm, I'm trying to get him on it let's do it can i still join even though it's like season's already started yeah, absolutely okay Surfsignup.com. Just get on there, find our district. Surfsignup.com. Yep. 
That's I believe the that's ESA. it. That's yeah. And there's like an ESA SNC website, right. which I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. But that's the portal it takes you to to set up an account uh, through this amateur system. Gotcha. That goes up and down the eastern seaboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what was that website? I'm gonna write it down. Surf sign up. Surf sign up. Dot com. Dot com. All right. So y'all out there, check it out. You might see me. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. It's fun. I think it the it's got a really great community aspect. Yeah. Which my family coming down here, we didn't know anyone. Mm. I think my high school headmaster retired here and we had dinner with them once. Oh wow. Um but other than that, I have an aunt and uncle that live in Beaufort, North Carolina. Uh-huh. We used to go up there and go to Atlantic Beach and stuff. So that's when I was looking at grad schools, that's what gravitated towards here. And yeah, uh, we just, my wife and I just leaned into the things we like to do. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of my close friends are all surfers here. Yeah, sweet. And yoga people. Yeah. And yoga people. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. So um, so let's let's get back to this wave. Yes. You're locked in, locked cruising in. down, just this, this, this time standing still, this long line. You kick out and you've got that look. I've got the look. I've got the feeling. I'm like shaking because you like it's very uh, vivid. You're almost like taking it all in. And without even thinking twice, I'm like, I'm doing it again. And I just paddle out. Yeah. Take off deeper. And I had a pretty gnarly wipe out there because uh-huh. I just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper on a nine five. And right. I'm like, and I finally I pushed the limit and I bit the dust. And then yeah. I popped up and I was like, I'm over top of rocks right now. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say deeper, you're you're further down. It's a point break. Yes, basically. So I'm deeper in the pocket. It's a left. Mm-hmm. I'm goofy foot, so I so like it. Yeah, I'm in heaven. I'm ready. And, um, and I just I, I remember four or five waves, but I remember the one where I was just like, "Hey, this is what it's about." Like these are the waves. Like I was used to beach break, mm-hmm. and so, um, I got way more confident. Yeah. After surfing reefs, because it's like you wipe out on a beach break, you're not hitting the bottom every time. Mm-hmm. So it's the same deal with anything else that's. Where the bottom's a little more um, precarious. Yeah. So. And over rocks, over reef is precarious. Yes. But you learn to wipe out that way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. And then and it's, to this day, I kind of use that you, that self-awareness mindset. Mm-hmm. Like I went body surfing on the big island of Hawaii. And I went out with these guys for a wedding. And I felt safe because the guy I was with was a Manhattan Beach lifeguard. <laughs> so I was like, that was my justification. Meanwhile, we paddle out this right right hand like... like um, volcanic rock break so if you duck dive under you can hear the chatter of these boulders oh, and those goodness. are sharp it's yeah. um we call it ah uh-uh, which is the actual hawaiian word for it but oh, it's wow. just like um it's just like a basalt that's settled and it's really sharp and yeah. it's got limpets all over it so we all got cut out trying to get out <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah it it's just one of those points where in that point of that wave whereas like you just need to, these are all the components all coming together, mm-hmm. thinking about what you need to do when you're surfing. And it changed my life kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the day, were you pushing your progression on those, those waves? That day? No, I was too just, encapsulated with that. And that was 2010. Okay. So that was a good 11 years ago. Yeah. So, but your progression now. My progression now is night and day different yeah i nose ride like all the time do you i get nice big turns on my short board my short board 610 everybody <laughs> it's kind of a <laughs> mid-length um but it's got a quad setup so I'll, <laughs> I'll rip on that right top turns back like i just i'm i'm confident in a lot of things now yeah yeah and and <clears throat> for people that are out there that are just getting started and they're not confident what what would you encourage them Treat it like any other sport. Mm -hmm. If you are an athlete and you're looking to get into surfing, treat it like a sport. Take a step back. Think about fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't say you don't have to do all this like cross training for it. That's really helpful. Right. But wave count too. So just get out there. Yeah. We're on the East Coast. There isn't a lot of swell all the time. Get a longboard, even if it's a beater board, and just get out there and practice all those like pop-ups and things. Right. Right. Over and over, as I as I ask people that one question, the continued response is, just get out there. Just get out there as often as you can. Just keep going. Just keep pushing. And I think that's, that's important for all of us in our progression as yes. athletes, as surfers, is that continual repetition, getting yes. in there. <coughs> di- yeah, even, even in different conditions. Because one of, one of the things that's so unique about a wave is 
it every wave is not the same. It never it never I mean, will be. Even coming off of a point break, they may be very similar, but each one is going to give you something different. Absolutely. And think about like um if anybody likes to read and learn about, and they're all getting into surfing, they want to read. The Wave was a really cool book. Have you ever read it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh, the author follows um, oceanographers, okay, boat captains, and Laird Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Laird, <laughs> and it kind of talks about how waves behave and trying mm. to find rogue waves, but it talks a lot of, of about wave mechanics too. Okay. And like there, it's such a nuanced. Um, concept, a physics concept of a wave. Mm-hmm. And they're always going to be different no matter what. Similar, yeah. but always different. Right, right. Yeah, I, I took a, one oceanography class at East Carolina University. Nice. And that was really eye-opening as far as the mechanics of a wave. I mean, we didn't talk about waves the whole time, but, you know, discussing the height and the depth and the way the water rotates and what it's doing as it's traveling across the ocean and what causes it. It's all so It's intriguing. so cool. And, and you like... That's what the ocean is. Mm-hmm. It's always moving. Yeah. No matter where you are, even if it's a little, like you're still moving. You're not going to just sit there and wait for a ball to come to you. No. No. And that makes it a very humbling experience too. It is. I've had days where it's terrible and I get out and I still am happy I got out there. Absolutely. Where uh, where has surfing taken you as far as travels? Um, It's taken me to Hawaii. It's taken me to Costa Rica a few times, mm-hmm. um, California a few times, and then... um. Because I work in the dredging industry, I get to bounce around to different dredge projects. Okay. And we're always throwing boards um, in the trucks or on the plane with us. So you, sur- you, you work with other surfers? Yes, I okay. do. Okay. So shout out TI Coastal, all my surfer friends and, uh, and bosses there. <laughs> but uh, what a great way to study the coast by going surfing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so you, you work out on the barges or what do you do? We do a lot of the hydrographic beach surveys on our own vessels. Okay. So we do single and multi-beam. Um, we do magnetometer surveys, but usually we'll survey just about a half mile offshore, mm-hmm. come in, and we look at the transition of the coastline. And then we'll take land surveys. That's my phone. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And then we'll take land surveys out and we'll create a 3D model of the beach and we look for volume displacement. Mm. And we do this on a monitoring scale for like the towns of Topsail Beach okay, and Figure 8 where we look at year over year gains and losses, accretions and um, erosion. Okay. Um, but we do this for dredge companies as they pump sand onto beaches. And we'll study where the sands they're taking the sand from, where they're putting it on the beach, and we survey all that. Mm. And then we do a geotechnical part where we study the sand they're placing on the beach to make sure it matches the existing environment. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So obviously you went to school for that. Yes. I, I got my master's in, at UNCW here okay. um, in geoscience. And my research was in um, paleo-oceanography. Wow. So deep ocean sediment. That's to cool. To look at deep ocean currents and their relationship with uh, the climate. Very awesome. Yeah. Wow. I uh, I read a book once. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if the, my, my, my background is like um, I use really tiny little things uh, to determine, like to try to determine bigger things uh-huh. and show evidence of it. And then um, I always tell my friends, like if I wasn't good at sports, I'd my nerd would be exposed. And the t- <laughs> quote from TJ, ready? Yeah. I was like, if I wasn't good at sports, like I kind of hide, hide it because I'm good at all this other stuff. And he's like, I don't think, I don't think you know, but everyone knows you're a nerd. So. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not hiding anything. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Oh man. Well, I, I'm sure we've surfed together. Yes, we I'm, have. I'm sure we've been out there. You're probably thrown shakas and everything. Probably. <laughs> probably. You've probably seen me geek out on my longboard going, oh, that guy's got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always, and, and if anyone wants to see me out there, I always wear a hat because okay. I've, my, I'm my, my balding, but you know, it makes me feel like Super Mario and maybe gives me some extra powers to wear that hat when I'm longboarding. <laughs> Any particular color? Is it that hat or? This hat right, this, this is one of my, um, my South End Surf Shop hats. I like them. He's got great logos and stuff so yeah. i usually i usually wear it yeah but, um now you said earlier south end was a sponsor yeah i'm a team rider there sweet um i was getting taps on my shoulder from other shops uh-huh. and i've always went always went to the south end yeah. and like tj had worked there when i was right here right. in school and i made friends that through that and my buddy james mcdonough and that, i'm kind of exposing my crew yeah there you go um and randy seller that's like our, our little nick crew there and then um Jeff was always part of that and Steve was always part of that. So I kept, I got a few shops asking me and I was like, I should, I should talk to Jeff first. And I was like, Hey, um, 
can I be sponsor? Like I'm looking for like, and he's like, absolutely. That's awesome. And he's like, no question. I yeah. was very fortunate, you know? Yeah, right on. That's awesome. <laughs> and then I just started posting a lot more surf photos and things. And then I had this um, company reach out to, he was a friend that we had been friends with and we surfed with in high school. And I went and visited him in California. And he's like, Hey, we love your lifestyle. Like yeah. you should be an ambassador too. Okay. So that led in at me getting sponsored by Exo. Exo. E-K-Z-O. Yep. I, I see a it on your any, shirt. Anytime, everywhere. That's what their, their theme is. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that what it stands for? Or Yeah, that's the whole theme of it all. Okay. Sweet. And um, it's really nice gear. It's all natural. Okay. Fibers, and so they're yeah, very cool. climate forward. Yeah, well, definitely um, make sure that uh, when this launches, you send it to the, to your sponsors and uh, let them hear this. this yeah, thing. so shout out to Jeff and Steve and, and, and Pat and Alize. Yeah, sweet. Sweet. Well, Phil, thank you. Is so it over much. already? No, it doesn't have to oh. be. Oh, what, how much? How, how long have we been, Bill? About 36 minutes. 36 minutes. I mean, we can go more. I, I'm, whatever what, works for you, man. I'll tell you what. Let, let's, let's go down a couple paths here. I'd like to. Worst wipeout. Oh, man. I have one at that place, Rye Rocks, that okay. comes to mind. Same had, day? No, different day. Okay. Spoop, super packed day. I wipe out on the inside, get washed over the rocks, <laughs> and I've never had a wave like go over me and then push me straight down. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, wow, it's deeper than I thought, and I'm way down here. And then I, I felt the other wave go on top. Of it. it was like a multiple wave set, but smaller, right? Yeah. And I pop up, and it's like a foot of foam, and you get up, and then I just see a set coming. Oh, boy. And I see a guy on the set, like coming right towards me, and I'm already gassed, and I'm covered in rocks, right? And I'm like, holy crap, how am I gonna get out of here? I got this leash. And I eventually make it out, but that was the first time I was actually scared, scared. Yeah. Um, yeah, that stunk. <laughs> 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 that was so New Hampshire's no joke when it gets big, and if you do wipe out on those amazing waves, there's a channel, you just gotta get to it. Because if it. you're not in it and you're in that impact zone, mm. that was a little sketchy. Um I've had I'm trying to think if I had any bad wipeouts here in, in Wrightsville that are comparative to that. But I don't think I have. But I, I did have one creepy one. Yeah. And I'm gonna give a shout out to Ben Gravy because okay. I surfed El Slamo. Oh, uh, did you? And it was on Dredge Project. So we were talking, it was firing. And that's a weird wave. Anybody thinks about surfing El Slamo, it breaks in four inches of water. Oh, okay. Cause because we see it, you know, with anybody that follows Ben Gravy on Instagram. And I had my my first shape board that uh, I've been shaping with TJ uh -huh. in the, under this birdie surfboards. Yes. And um I had my like five three mini Simmons space nugget, I call it. It changes <laughs> names all the time. And I took it right into the rocks. Mm. And I went to stand up because I was like laying flat. I was like, I wonder how deep it is. And I just like stand up to my ankles in water. And oh, I was like, mercy. I have to get out of here. I dodged a bullet. Oh. But I could feel the rocks and it was just like, but the Rye Rock one, I like how everything has names in it of rocks. But um <laughs> that was pretty sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. And I've even had like reef rash from Hawaii. Okay. And on the big island. Oh. Um, Cause it, they just have like sharp rocks and reef everywhere there. And it's pretty cause you're like, oh look, a yellow tang is swimming underneath me. <laughs> and then it's just reef everywhere. That's nuts. Yeah. It's definitely knowing your limits. Yes. But surfing is about pushing it as well. Yeah. That's, it's that little zone, mm -hmm. you know, because you, cause from an athlete, if anyone's an athlete or like, you don't have to be an athlete to know this. Anyone who has that discipline to pursue something, um, you always, to improve, you got to make yourself a little uncomfortable every yes, time. definitely. And knowing when you're like, I shouldn't be out here. Like, if you're getting those looks, if you're like looking at yourself, like, you should, probably shouldn't be out there. But like, push yourself. Like, yeah. there you go. Be confident. That, that little bit of confidence will guide you. Trust yourself. And that's that part of that threshold of when not to trust yourself. Right. And then when you do, do take the beating and you come up and you live to talk about it. Yes. And knowing you will be okay. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> that's good. Well, man, Phil, thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having me. This Absolutely. was really fun. Yeah, good. Well, I'm glad that we've got to meet. And uh, I'll be looking for you out on TDA and Catherine's Concrete. Heck yeah. And then somewhere. Well, I got your digits. We'll just shoot text like, oh, it's on. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, when, when switched. <laughs> uh, what's your Instagram? If anybody, I mean, you post pictures. Are you surfing? Yeah, or? it's um, it's private now, but I'm gonna go public with it. It's um, Phil D Photo. Phil D Photo, and it photo with an F. Phil D Photo with an F. Sweet. Phil with a PH. 
photo with an F. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Phil, thanks so much. We always end it with this. When What's the oldest reference in literature to surfing that you can think of? In literature? So historical literature, like going way back. What What do you think? What's the oldest you've heard that surfing? That I've heard that I, I haven't specifically read the excerpt of, but... Um... I think it would go back to when Cook went to Hawaii and he saw the people riding on boards there. Okay. Um, and then I've heard of like, obviously when um, Jesus was walking on water. Right, right. I've heard the walking on water one too. <laughs> but but that, that's a, if, if you want to get like historical, I remember watching and hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw or heard and I didn't, didn't follow it up, but like records of even back ancient China, people surfing. I bet. You know, way back. I mean, people have been crazy all for for centuries, right? Right. There had to be people trying. Hey, I bet you can't ride that. I bet, I bet I you can. Mesopotamians were like on it with all the, the Sumerian culture had probably already figured it out. We Ab- lost that culture. Absolutely. Well, there's there's a biblical reference in the Book of Acts. Okay. So the Apostle Paul is traveling to Rome, and he's on the ship. Lots of people, and storms really bad. They hit a reef. The ship breaks up, and as uh, the text continues it says everyone made it safely to shore it said some made it in on pieces of the ship and then it says and others on boards done so I, that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking <laughs> i don't know if paul was on that but it's definitely there it's plausible <laughs> anyway ladies and gentlemen thanks for joining in on this episode y'all take care we'll see you in the water bye